Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We'll be waiting a few more minutes to get started, probably about three or four minutes past the hour, just to give everyone a chance to connect prior to starting. Okay, good morning everyone and thanks for joining us today and being part of our community. We have some great content planned, but just before we start, I'd like to go over some housekeeping items. Uh, this is our fourth session, so apologies if you've heard this four times previously. Uh, feel free to ask questions at any time by typing in the IM window. Be aware that anything you post will be publicly visible. If you prefer, you can post your questions anonymously by checking the box right below where you enter your question. We've had a large number of people register for these webinar series. We're thrilled to see the level of interest, but please bear in mind, we might not be able to answer all of your questions during the session. We do have people standing by to answer questions and we'll do our best to answer as many as we can during the call. If you visit aka.ms slash MCAS Q&A, you'll be able to see a post dedicated to the webinar questions uh, over the series of these webinars and we'll be review the questions that raised today and we'll post any answers there that we can't do during the course of the session. If you're listening to the recording after today's session, this is also a place for you to post any questions you might have. We are recording today's webinar and this will be shared publicly. We will post the recording on our community at aka.ms slash MCAS recordings, which is on your screen. Talking of community, if you're not already signed up, please do come and join us at aka.ms slash security community. This is the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars. It's also where we post major announcements and a place where you can interact directly with our engineering teams that create our security products. You'll be able to influence our product designs, get early access to changes by doing things like participating in private previews, requesting features, reviewing our roadmap, and of course, attending in-person events and webinars like today's. As I mentioned, we have some great content planned for today. Today's session is part four of a six-part series 
on Microsoft Cloud App Security, or MCAS for short. Throughout this series, we'll be walking through all the major pillars of functionality, showing you how to deliver and configure each part. So I'd like to introduce you to the team on the call today. Sebastian will be presenting and he's one of our resident MCAS experts on the call. He's a program manager in our MCAS team and part of what we call our Get to Production group. This role is focused on helping our customers deploy and configure MCAS, so he's well suited to the topics we're talking about today. On the call, we also have Boris, Netta and Gershon uh, to help answer your questions. So with the housekeeping covered, I'll pass to Sebastian to get started. And sorry for this, I was on mute, so um, let me start again. So today we're going to focus on the unsanctioned application compared to the previous weeks that were focused on what we call sanctioned applications, so applications that are uh, managed by your company. So we'll be looking here at how you can discover applications that are not yet managed by your company and how you can assist them. So first, a quick reminder on how Cloud App Security can ingest some data to provide you visibility in your environment. So if you look at uh, the cloud application that your user are doing, they will be accessing those applications usually through a secure web gateway or a firewall. Uh, and one of the things that we can do is send the logs that you have in those uh, appliances to Cloud App Security, where they will be parsed and analyzed to provide you uh, much information on them. We can also um, apply some configuration to your appliance, a secure web gateway for which we have native integration, or also, as we'll discuss later, Windows Defender ATP, to also control which application can be accessed by your user. So let's talk about Shadow IT Discovery Lifecycle because one of the first thing you want to do here is to discover which application are in use within your organization. So what you're going to do after sending the traffic log to Cloud App Security, what we'll do is to identify for you the risk level of those applications. So we have about 80 risk factor uh, that will be uh, providing you information for the discovered application. Uh, also information on the legal rec regulation uh, compliance level for those applications and evaluate the compliance. So this is something that will be required for you to, to know exactly uh, the risk level that those applications expose if they are used by your, com by your uh, user to, for, for example, store company data. In the next stage, you will also have to analyze the usage. You've detected that there are some risky applications that are in use within your company, but you want to understand who is using those applications. What's the, the, the percentage of your user across the company accessing them? What's the, uh, the, the level of upload or download from or to those applications? So that's definitely something you have to look at to be sure that you identify those the right risk here. And then once you've identified those applications that are actually used by your user, like uh, let's say cloud storage application, you want to manage those cloud applications. How can you manage those cloud applications? By, for example, moving to single sign-on for them. So even if you're not able to control those application using API connectors, which are, provide uh, the full control, you can at least move them to an integration with your um, identity provider like Azure AD and be able to control the access at the identity level. And of course, when it's done, 
you have continuous monitoring of those applications and their usage. This is basically how you can start this kind of project. Something important to keep in mind when you're starting Shadow IT Discovery Lifecycle Management is that this is not only an IT project. IT will be involved to configure the log upload into Cloud App Security. So that's where IT will be uh, important to provide the technical capabilities to discover those applications. But it, validating that application can be used or not within your company based on the risk level of those applications or the compliance level or the compliance capabilities is frequently something that will have to be discussed with either your compliance department or maybe legal department. This is not generally something that we see uh, being the decided by, by IT. Even if IT has uh, is worked on this, this is something that will become uh, really critical for the company. So you have to involve many, uh, many people from either the business, compliance, IT and security teams. So Cloud App Security, as I told you, is able to identify the application used within your company using your traffic log. And what it does when you've uploaded your data, it will provide you a direct visibility on the amounts of applications that have been discovered, the traffic, upload and download, also a direct visibility on the uh, categories of the application that are in use, like cloud storage, messaging, or CRM solution, and also information on the application that are the most used for your environment. You have a native integration for cloud discovery with secure web gateway like iBoss or Zscaler. So if you have uh, those products in your environment, you don't have to deploy what we call a log collector. So a log collector, I will show you how you can configure this, but this is a virtual appliance. So this is an image running on Docker that's going to receive the log from your firewalls and your proxy and um, send them directly to Cloud App Security. If you're using iBoss or Zscaler, you don't have to implement this kind of technology. You can use their, uh, their um, native integration with Cloud App Security to directly send the log. And also uh, because we have uh, those API capabilities where you can restrict access to the application, you will be able to have some uh, restriction policies that you can configure with them. So your user will have this kind of page that you could customize, telling them that they cannot access specific application that you have flagged in Cloud App Security as being non-compliant with your environment. I will demonstrate you shortly how you can do this kind of thing. Speaking about the integration with other solution, we have a native integration also with Windows Defender ATP, or now I should say Microsoft Defender ATP. So this integration with Microsoft Defender ATP allows you to send the traffic log from your PCs, so Windows 10 PCs that are inside the corporate network, but also outside the corporate network. It's going to provide you visibility not only on the user that are accessing the application, but also on the computers that are used to access those applications. And this integration is as simply as just a one click button here where you go to Windows Defender Security Center and just decide to enable Microsoft Cloud App Security integration. As soon as you click on this button, uh, Defender ATP will start sending the traffic log to MCAS where they will be processed. A great feature that we recently announced is uh, and coming really soon in this integration is that you will be able also to prevent access to those um, sanction, unsanctioned application using the integration with Windows Defender ATP. So even if your user are uh, trying to access those applications from outside the corporate network, you will be able to control which application they are allowed to access and to use. Another great feature that we have for uh, cloud uh, discovery is the shadow IT report for your executive. We know that uh, your management usually asks you to provide some reports on the application that are used within your company, the amount of data that's being uploaded, but also the risk level of the application that are used by your user. Instead of asking you to generate those reports manually, Cloud App Security allows you with a simple click to export that specific PDF that will provide you those uh, different reports, but also some recommendation, like uh, how you can classify your application or which application you should spend some time to verify. 
We also recently announced um, advanced reporting capabilities with Power BI by consuming some logs that will be sent to Azure Sentinel. This integration will let you integrate more information than the one that's provided by Cloud App Security and your traffic logs by connecting, for example, to third party databases where you can define business hour. Having this kind of capability will allow you to define not only the application, the risk level, the category, or but also see who from uh, who is accessing those applications from the different department and also identify who is, should be the person to contact in case you detect a data breach for your application. You will also be able here to, to have a consolidated view on the application usage across uh, several uh, user or BUs. So that's basically uh, any, any type of custom reporting that you will be able to consolidate using this feature. So this feature will be also uh, released in the coming months. So stay tuned to tech community to know when you can start using it. And now time to move to a demo. So now you should be familiar with Cloud App Security a dashboard. If you want to look at discovery data, you have to go to the discover section and we can start by looking at cloud discovery dashboard. So the cloud discovery dashboard uh, is the general place where you will see information on the application discovered in your environment, IP addresses, user and traffic, and also a consolidated view for the different application categories and the top entities, so top user using those applications. If you go to the discovered apps in your environment, you will see here a list of the discovered applications. The discovered application here are classified by score, so the risk score, and you can see that here in my environment, if I scroll down, I'm able to find all the discovered application in my environment. I could easily click on an application here and see more details on the different properties that are used to create that risk score here. So if I look at this specific application, you can see that we have a general risk score of seven, but regarding security, we have a 10. We provide here, here information on things like password policy, if we have data audit trails, or if we have a valid certificate name for that specific application, if the application provides multi-factor authentication, and extremely important when you want to start to manage those applications, does the application support SAML? We also provide you information about the data center location for the application and more details on the headquarters. If we look at the compliance and legal part, you can see also that we provide you information about applications that are HIPAA compliant or um, also SOC2, for example. You can see that for this application, the, uh, the information is great. So it means that for this specific application, we didn't uh, get any information from the vendor. Those specific information that you see here are provided by automated tools that were developed, but also cloud analysts contacting those vendors to be able to stay up to date with the current certification of those applications. Pretty interesting for the European customer is also information about the legal capabilities of the application and topics related to GDPR. If I look at the different application that I have in my environment, that can be a huge number. So we frequently see thousand applications that are in use within companies. So how can you start understanding the application that are in use within your company? How can you start to classify those applications? You can do this by using the different queries that you can use here within the search console. So we also provide you by default some queries that you can start using, or you can use your own queries to look for let's say application that have a risk score between zero and five, that's going to filter all those applications based on this specific score. And maybe you're only interested by the cloud storage category. So by using this simple filter, I'm able to see all the different applications that are in use by my company. I can see also the, uh, the traffic and the user using those applications. So once you have discover those applications. You can start 
by defining if an application will be, for example, like for retransfer flagged as sanctioned, meaning that this application is in use with a new company, or maybe you want to flag them as unsanctioned. Unsanctioned means that they are not supported by your company. And if you have blocking rules in your uh, Zskiller or Windows Defender ATP, that will restrict access to those applications for your user. This is the simplest way to manage your application, but most of the time we know that it's not easy to decide if an application should be uh, considered a sanction or a sanction. So what we provide for you to know how to uh, review those applications during the life cycle, we have here the custom tags and you can create any tags you want. And you could define that, for example, this application here has to be reviewed. Maybe that this one crash plan is to be reviewed too. And if I look at keep vault, I maybe want to define that this specific application here is IT approved, but is not approved by other, uh, other uh, department within my company. So this is really an easy way for you to start classifying those applications to be able to provide custom reports. Another thing that you can do from this page is to go to advanced filter, just like the other cloud app security capabilities that we have, and maybe start with advanced filtering, like looking, for example, for security risk factor, like SAML, and you want to search for application where SAML is not supported, or maybe the information is not available. So this is an easy way for you to identify that all those applications here that we just discovered with this query cannot be managed. So then you have to start discussing internally, do we want to allow our user to access cloud storage application that we cannot control? In many companies, we see that uh, this is not something that they will accept, so they can easily start flagging those different applications as unsanctioned. But maybe you want to make some exception like here, for example, for WeTransfer, we want to keep it as sanctioned. What can you do if you don't have the native integration with Zscaler or Windows Defender ATP to restrict access to the application? To provide you some control for that specific feature, Cloud App Security provides you a capability when you go to the three dots here to generate a block script. So a block script, if I click on it, will let you select a specific appliance. So for example, Palo Alto and generate a script that you can reuse to configure your network appliance to prevent access to those applications. So if we have a quick look to the script, you see that this is going to block specific application here that have the, um, the domain name or the IPs that are, um, that are discovered by Cloud App Security. If you're not using one of those applications for which we provide those, uh, those uh, blocking script, you can of course use that information that comes from another, um, from another appliance and use the domains that we provide here to configure your own appliance. So this is something that can be customized with a little script. Other things that you can do, so here we've spent some time on looking at the, the different application they discovered, is of course review information based on the IP addresses that are in use within your company and look for the uh, for the different IPs that have the higher level of traffic. So you see that I have a small environment, but this is an easy way for you to look at IP addresses. Or you can also look at the user level. You can see that here also in my environment, when I look at a user, if I look at that specific user name, this is an easy way to get information about user activities in your uh, when, while accessing those cloud applications. You can see, for example, user with a specific up upload or download activities, and this is an easy way for you to identify when somebody is creating uh, more activities uh, from compared to usual activities. You also see here that the username of my user has been anonymized. This is a setting that you can configure when you uh, decide to upload your logs to Cloud App Security. And we will cover uh, that specific uh, configuration part in a minute. So let me come back, go back to the, the discovered application page that we had here. 
So we've been filtering several uh, applications here. So let me quickly go back to this specific number here, cloud storage. So we know that it can be extremely uh, time consuming to do this investigation manually. So what you can always do in Cloud App Security is to create a new policy from the search. When you create a new policy from the search, and let's say I'm going to create a policy called discovery demo, you can define that based on the filtering you have here. So this is what we created uh, before as a filter. You can decide to apply now a filter for specific uh, continuous reports. So a report is going to be a data stream for your organization. So let's say that you have separate data streams for either your whole organization or maybe your executives or a specific location user. So let, or maybe here let's select US employees. You can apply here custom policies for application that will be discovered for those specific use group of user. What you can do once you have uh, created this kind of policy is to automate the classification of your application. For example, you can say that in your environment for cloud storage application that have a risk score that are that's come that's a big between zero and four, you maybe want to automatically automatically flag those application as unsanctioned. So each time we will discover a new cloud storage application with that are matching that filter, they will be flagged as unsanctioned and automatically blocked if you've defined this kind of policy. So you don't have to review them one by one. This is really a way to automate this kind of process. Speaking about policies, if I look at the uh, cloud discovery anomaly detection policies that we have in Cloud App Security, we also provide um, built-in policies that will provide you anomalous behavior for your users or their IP addresses uh, that will be based on people behavior. So you could say that, for example, here, let's have a look at this. This is a policy that's going to alert you when we detect that for a specific IP address, the behavior has changed based on what we saw in the previous weeks for that specific IP. And we have, of course, the same for your user. And just like what you had in the past, you can define on which user you want to apply this specific policy. And you can also configure your smart engine sensitivity by moving the alert level to maybe a lower level rather than the medium one. Those different policies that you have here will create some alerts. So if I move to the alert page, and look at cloud discovery alerts. You can discover some specific uh, alert. Like here, I have a policy that's alerting me when I discover a non IT approved application from data center. Like in this case, you can see that I have SharePoint and OneDrive activities from my data center. So this is possibly some data exfiltration to those cloud applications from my servers. This is a way to monitor this environment, but you can also see that we provide you information on discovered application security breach. So this is something that that's built in in a product. So when we heard about a breach within a cloud application that we saw in the past in your environment, we will alert you. Like here, you can see that in my company we are using Citrix GoToMeeting, and based on some information that were um, that were released in the press, we know that Citrix GoToMeeting was breached in December. We also provide you more information to know about this specific breach and you're redirected to the specific announcements. This is really an easy way for you to know how to handle those applications. And if you go back to the process that we define, where you def when we talk about where you define a business owner for an application, this is really a good process to define within your company to go back to the specific people that are using that application and maybe ask them to reset their password or validate that their account wasn't compromised. So now let's move to also uh, my report again. So I showed you those different filters, but one thing that I didn't show you is that we have here different report. I showed you in my policy that I was able to select specific employees uh, reporting. 
or here you see that I can select Windows 10 endpoint users. So how can I filter my data stream for those users? To be able to do this kind of thing, you have to go to first uh, your settings. You have cloud discovery settings, and this is where you can start customizing uh, those different settings. So if I go to continuous report, so continuous report is a data stream on which you're going to have your reports and your alerts uh, that will be generated. This is where you can generate several customer, custom reports. How can you do this? It's as, simply, it's as simple as just clicking on create a report, defining a report name, like let's say demo report. And you can start filtering by either data sources. So a data source is an appliance that's going to send traffic to Cloud App Security. So I could specify here that I want to receive traffic from my Windows endpoint. Maybe it's killer and let's say my uh, my blue code here. So you can select specific sources for moving your environment. So if you have uh, different appliances sending logs from different location in your organization, this is a way to start filtering uh, the reports per location. After data sources, you can also filter by looking at the user groups the IP addresses tags that you would have defined in Cloud App Security or the IP address ranges. So if I want to come here and say, I want to look at the other groups, I can search for a specific group like US, okay, here, US employees. So by selecting this, what I'm actually doing is, is uh, telling to Cloud App Security, I want you to create a shadow IT discovery report for my US employees that are connecting to those specific network appliance. And this is uh, fail to save. I think that's because I'm already filtering this one. So this is basically how you can, yeah, I'm already creating a uh, creative one here. So this is why you, how you can generate your custom reports. If we look at the other settings we have in Cloud Discovery, an important one is also the score metrics. So I've been showing you that we calculate specific uh, risk score for your discovered application, but this is based on our, um, our uh, specific criteria. You can always change how you calculate those score by, for example, designing that maybe for your company, if an application doesn't provide multi-factor capabilities, that's not really important. So maybe you want to move the importance to low. Maybe not having an audit trail in the application is extremely important for you. So you want to probably increase that specific risk score to very high. And you can also start working with data at rest encryption to high etc and based on your requirement you see that you can customize all the different uh, properties weight for the overall risk score so this is something that you can really customize for everything you see it's pretty long and when you click on save what we're going to do is to recalculate all the risk score for the different application so you maybe quickly saw the message here telling you that it will take up to one hour to have this so this is how you can customize your reporting capabilities here. Let's have a look now at uh, how we can now start to send data to Cloud App Security. We, we've been telling uh, how this feature works, but not yet how you can start sending logs there. To start sending the logs, what you can do is go to, uh, or let's, uh, let's, sorry, let me start again. Let's go to Cloud App security create snapshot report. So usually we see that people want to first validate their traffic log before creating continuous reporting. To do that, you can start uh, demo reports creation. So this is going to be creating a snapshot report. So this will be providing you visibility on the application you are using at a specific time. You can choose the data source. So a data source could be, for example, uh, let's say a Barracuda F-Series firewall. And something extremely important, we ask you to verify the log format that we have for that appliance. If I look 
at what we have here. You see that for FTP uh, logs that are sent for the Barracuda firewalls, those are the logs that we expect from your appliance. And we also provide you a, a sample to be downloaded to be able to test it. If your logs do not match what we have here for your specific appliance, we really recommend you to use our custom parser. So the custom parser, if you've been able to verify that the logs are not matching here, is something that you will find at the end of the data sources. And you see here custom log format. And this is where you can customize the logs that you will send. So in my case, I've been able to select uh, CSV files, but you see that you can also use key values information. You can specify the delimiter. And here we ask you to provide the custom header of the logs that you'll be sending to Cloud App Security. We also ask you to configure information about the date and time format so we can parse it correctly. We ask you also to provide information about the source IP address column name, destination IP address column name, destination URL format, uh, information about the username and the username format. So it could be an alias, it could be an email address or corporate slash alias, depending on how your appliance format this. And when it's done, you can save that custom log parser so we know that the logs you'll be sending will be matching that format and we know exactly how to parse this. If you want to anonymize this information, then you can choose here, I want to anonymize private information. So what it does is to uh, tokenize the name of your user that will be sending to the cloud uh, for probably privacy reason. When it's done, when you've uploaded the traffic log that you want to send, so in my case, it was, uh, I think, oh, did I save it somewhere else? I'm not sure, yes, yet, maybe here, or let me quickly go to the right location. So when you select, for example, here a blue code log, you'll be able to create your um, snapshot report, and this snapshot report will be available here in Cloud App Discovery, in the Cloud App Discovery dashboard. And if you go to the reports here, you will see the continuous reports based on continuous log upload and snapshot report. So my demo report will appear here and that will be a one-time uh, information regarding the shadow IT in your environment. Something really important, you can use this feature to validate your logs, to demonstrate maybe to your management uh, what you're uh, seeing in the traffic log in your organization, but you will not be able to apply policies on snapshot reports. So those automated actions that I showed you before cannot be applied to snapshot reports. If you want to use policies, you have to use continuous report here and continuous reports are used by using either the native integration or the log collector. How can you start with a log collector? If you go to the settings and you go to source log collector, this is where you can configure automatic log uploads from your appliances. The first thing you have to do to do so is to first create a data source. A data source is going to be the appliance that you want to use to send the logs. So let's select uh, here McAfee Web Gateway, for example. So I'm going to use McAfee. You define the receiver type. So is it FTP or syslog? Usually we see people sending uh, messages using syslog to the data source. And you can define if you want to anonymize private information. So what we just did here was creating a logical object for your appliance on premises. So how can you now uh, specify that you're going to receive those logs in Cloud App Security? To do that, you have to go to the log collector tab and you have to create a new log collector. So for the log collector, you have to define a name like LC1. You have to define your host IP address uh, here, like 10.1.1.10. And you define data sources. 
So your log collector can have multiple data sources. I can have here my McAfee, maybe my demo blue code, and maybe other appliances that will come here. So if you want to send multiple appliance traffic log to Cloud App Security, you don't have to create multiple log collector. Actually, if you want to, to do that, something you really have to take into consideration is your traffic coming from those appliances to the log collector. What's the path, the traffic path between the appliance and the log collector? And maybe if you have some uh, poor bandwidth on the travel, you will decide to install another log collector for those appliances, but this is definitely something that's required. And you can also run your log collector in Azure if you don't want to host it on premises. When it's done, you click on update and we're going to provide you the deployment guide to install your log collector on your host. If you click on this link, you will see that you will be redirected to our documentation where we explain you all the details about the deployment, information about how to deploy the log collector on Windows. So this is something that we now support. The requirement for the for the uh, for the, the the Windows Server, but you can also install it on Ubuntu, Red Hat Lions, and we recently added also CentOS support. So you have to follow this procedure to deploy in your environment that server, and when it's ready, you can go to the host machine that we just deployed and use that command that has been provided here to configure it. So this command contains an API token here that will be used for authenticating your, um, your uh, log collector to Cloud App Security. And it also includes information about the different data sources that will be used on that specific uh, log collector and the, the port that will be used to receive traffic from your appliances here. So all the information will be defined here. You also see here that if you're using a proxy, this is where you can define in this command that you have to use a specific proxy. You have also something that can be useful if you're using FTP. You have the FTP username and password that will recommend you to, to keep somewhere if you want to upload some traffic using not only the syslog capabilities, but also FTP capabilities of the log collector. When it's done, you see that the status of your log collector will be created. And as soon as the log collector will be configured correctly, you will see that this status will change and will alert you uh, if we do not receive any traffic log from the log collector. So how can you then monitor that you're actu actually receiving logs from your log collector? To do that, you can go to the governance log. And in your governance log, you can search for action type and look for parse cloud discovery log. And this is where you will see all the different traffic log that will be sent by your appliances. So you can see that in my environment, I'm, I was receiving correctly here, a traffic log from my blue code proxy. But at some point, because I was testing uh, some other logs, I had some, um, some um, format that didn't match what Cloud App Security was expecting. So if you monitor this specific um, governance log, and this can be done by using our API or the PowerShell module, you can be alerted as soon as you have some failure in the logs that are transferred to Cloud App Security. So this is really the way to monitor this. So let me also quickly show you another feature that we discussed during the implementation, and I want to show you about the anonymization. As I told you, the log collector can anonymize the username while they're um, displayed in Cloud App Security. How can you identify when you're investigating on a security incident, which user was using that specific application? The process to do so is to go to your user page, copy the username, and you have to go to your settings. And here in Cloud Discovery settings, if you go to anonymization, this is where you can define that you want to resolve a specific username. We have to specify a justification, like for example, 
an incident number. You have to define that you want to resolve a username. Resolve it. And here you have the information about the user that was in your alert. When you de-anonymize a user, this is something that will also appear in the governance log. So you can see here that you have a trace for the admin user here, resolving the cloud discovery username of this specific user. So you have the justification available here and you can track your admin activities. This operation, I just did it here using the UI, but of course we understand that this can be really difficult when you have multiple usernames to resolve in bulk. And this is a feature that we provide through the API and that we provide, will provide also really soon in the ProShell module. So this is most of the thing that I wanted to share with you regarding Cloud App Discovery. And I'll be moving now to the Q&A session and see if there are anything that you want to hear. So Adam, if you have any question, don't hesitate. Thanks, Sebastian. Um, there's quite a few questions coming up around the integration with uh, Microsoft Defender ATP. Um, is that something you can perhaps talk a bit more around or do you need me to give you some specifics? No, um, so the, um, this integration currently works with um, Windows Defender ATP and rolled computer. And the current requirement is to have Windows, uh, Windows 10 Enterprise version 18 or 9. We're waiting also for the backward compatibility that could um, come really soon. And the backward compatibility will work with uh, Windows 10 version 17.09 and plus. So we'll be able to go to support version that are a, a year older to compared to what we support at the moment. I don't know if it's more about this capability here. Though, so the supporting operating system, or do you need more information about uh, other capabilities or, or more specific questions? It, it was specific around how do they configure to, to get the events out of that source? Um, OK, so let me show you this. So this is extremely simple. You have to go to the Microsoft Defender page. So let's, the assumption here is that uh, your computer is already onboarded with uh, Microsoft Defender uh, ATP. So when you go to Defender ATP, you go to the settings, you go to advanced feature, and in the advanced feature here, you can see that you have the Microsoft Cloud App Security integration. So just clicking on this button will send um, will send a signal to the service and automatically Defender ATP will start sending all the traffic log to Cloud App Security. So this is the only thing you have to do. If your computer is already protected by Defender ATP, as soon as you enable this checkbox, the traffic log will be sent to Cloud App Security. Does it answer your question? I think it does answer the question oh. that was raised. Oh, okay. Okay, perfect. Um, look, to be honest, I think that was more or less it. I think the guys in the Q&A have, have covered um, very well the other questions that were raised. Um, I don't have any other topics that I can see that I think really need drilling into. Um, okay. If nothing else that you want to talk about, then I will open the forum very quickly to the rest of the Microsoft guys on the call to see if there's anything that they feel we need to call out. Mm -hmm. pause for Perfect. A moment. And if anybody has any question or wants some follow up, they can always come to the uh, tech community or we'll be able to answer those, uh, those other questions. Absolutely. So, so, so Sebastian, maybe just talk about, there was a question about licensing with, uh, for discovery in MKS. Mm -hmm. So regarding licensing, we have uh, several flavors. If you have people you have being licensed for Azure Active Directory Premium Plan 1, which is part of EMS E3, this specific feature we just saw, so Cloud App uh, Discovery, is available for them. So it's already provided now uh, in the EMS E3 license in replacement to the, the, the old 
Azure AD uh, cloud discovery capabilities that was based on an agent. So people being licensed for EMS C3, they can already use cloud app security discovery. They are the license, they have the license for this. And of course, if you have EMSC5 or standalone cloud app security, you can you can uh, use the full capabilities. Excellent. And so one question that's come in that I think is quite interesting is if you've got Windows Defender or Microsoft Defender ATP, um, how can you configure the blocking rules for that? How, how do they, you know, how do they integrate that part of it? So this is not yet um, in the in the product. So this is a feature we've been working for several months and that will come really soon in the product. So to block access to the application, the only thing that you will have to do is to come to the discovered application page and tag the application as being here unsanctioned. So defining application as unsanctioned will allow you to block access to those applications. So we will release this in several um, several flavors. So the first iteration will be blocking the application for everybody, but we understand that this is not uh, what every company wants. So we'll be able to provide more granular granularities in a future iteration where you will be able to, re to define uh, some restriction based on a group of machine and not applying the same setting to all the users. Does it answer the question? I think so, yes. Perfect. So from my perspective, I, I think that that's pretty much it. I will pause one more time for the Microsoft guys if there's anything further to add. And I shall take that as a no. So look, thank you very much, um, Sebastian. Thank you very much everyone for attending today. Some quick final reminders. If for some reason you don't have the rest of the series and we've got two more sessions left, you can find it um, at aka.ms slash MCAS webinar, which is on your screen. You can also find the recordings at MCAS recordings. Uh, and if you haven't already joined, please do come and join our community, aka.ms slash security community. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for being part of our community. We hope to see you all again uh, next week. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. I'll speak to you next week.